progress. Okay, so starting with anxiety, um, um, first of all, let me just uh, say a little bit about myself. I work in mental health um, in a, a group home, and I've um, helped to organize facilities throughout um, Arizona and um, Las Vegas. So I know a lot about the system. And the reason why I like educating on the levels that I can spiritually, biblically, um, and psychologically is because if you get support and you really want to change something about yourself and the feeling, say if it's depression or anxiety, you can do it, but you have to have support. And you also have to have people around you that are vibing on that energy that you, you want to get to. So um, I'm going to start with the understanding of anxiety. And you guys have a sheet. I sent it to you. Um, and I'll go into um, some of the aspects of the shadow uh, work because anxiety is internal, right? And that's why we need to get inside of ourselves um, to understand what's happening. So anxiety is a common emotional response characterized by feelings of tension. We could put stress there, uh, worried thoughts and physical changes that can happen in like your blood pressure. Um, you can go into other aspects of, you know, the physical and find that um, if you let anxiety go, it can turn into depression. Um, it can also create, um, hyperactive disorders. Uh, you also can, you know, have panic attacks and that is, um, allowing the, um, emotions that are attached to anxiety, allowing them to stay too long, or, or they will say it's been prolonged. Um, anxiety, uh, could be anxiousness that is good. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a propelling you to get up and go and do something. So you might lay in the bed in the morning and you feel like hyped up. Well, that energy needs to be working. And a lot of times with anxiety, people don't understand that it has to be working and we have to navigate the energy um, positively because in most cases, when I speak, I'm speaking from the times that I, I mean, from the time that I grew up, it was a lot of information that wasn't shared or known like I'm, I'm giving right now. Um, anxiety is an energy that is saying I need to do something. I need to move my hands. That's why a lot of people are, you know, up at night and they're on their phones. They might wake up in the middle of the night and it's not really being anxious. It's just that my mind and my hands want to do something. So when you get in that place, what do you do? Sometimes you can take some chamomile tea. I'm not a doctor. Um, I work in therapy. I have a supervisor who um, sees over my uh, therapeutic um, works. So um, moving on, you can take chamomile tea. And even in this book, um, it, you know, we'll get into that, things that will help. Because herbs will help for those that don't want to uh, take medication. And some of you may have some that you might want to put in the chat. So moving on, what are the symptoms of anxiety? Um, emotional symptoms are excessive worrying. Um, when you look at excessive worrying, what I know is for myself and even working with others is that it's something that you cannot stop until you realize that you're doing it. So it's all about recognition and realization. Excessive worry is a pattern. It's a habit. It's like smoking. For, for people that smoke or, you know, for, um, I don't, I'm just going to use that example. I'm not going to go further. Um, the feelings of restlessness or being on the edge, um, difficulty concentrating. You didn't have to put it, these. Uh, uh, these speak up. You didn't want these. Did you say something, Yolanda? No, ma'am. Oh, Quinn. Yeah, I was listening. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I heard someone say something. Okay, so um, irritability. And irritability is, let me, let me explain. 
you feel irritable, but sometimes it's because the mind is not, it's not working the way you want to. You can't think clear. So that's a place where we can start saying, okay, I need to get clear on what's happening in my head. And the answer is to me, I'm going to tell you always words. You replace your words in your head with new words. So that means that if I feel like I'm confused, I begin to say, I am not confused. And I stay fixated on it. It's a practice. So in the realm of anxiety, now, we practice now to undo anxiety. We practice to maintain the symptoms rather than the symptoms maintain us. All right. Um, I have talked with and worked with a lot of people that will say, I cannot do that. I can't do what you're saying. And the reason why we cannot do it is because we believe what we've been doing already. We believe that worrying is the case. We have not become aware of how to stop the worry because it's become a part of our system. And we, we could go deep into that. But if I could just make one recognition that I'm worrying or I feel anxious, I began to use, you know, some breathing techniques. Just breathe in and then blow it out. It will change the way that my mind feels and the oxygen in my body begins to flow. So we got two things that can happen right now. A person can begin to walk. They can begin to work out and they can begin. And I'm going to ask you um, to just take this in, eat less because food makes you sleepy. And if food makes you sleepy, then the irritability will be more persistent. You can say, well, how does that go with anxiety? Well, some people will eat when they become anxious. So walking and movement is the best thing to begin to move the thoughts of anxiousness and the feelings. Because you know, in your heart, and your body, you'll begin to feel all of that. And you need to move it because the energy is saying, I need to move my body. I need to move something. But what we need to do is move in positive ways. Y'all understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, yes. So physical. Okay. Okay. So physical symptoms are rapid heartbeat or palpitations. Sweating, trembling, shaking, fatigue or tiredness, um, gastro problems, meaning that you can feel bloated, your stomach might feel like it has butterflies in it, um, nervousness in the um, stomach area, and you will have difficulty sleeping. Some of the symptoms that go along with this, meaning behavioral um are where we avoid it's, it's it says avoidance of fear situations or activity and when i break that down it means that i'm avoiding things that i need to face i could be afraid of something and i keep avoiding it um if someone is afraid to be in social paradigms you know their social skills may not be as sharp as they want them to be. They can become anxious. And that fear uh, comes up because it's actually asking us to engage so that you can overcome the fear. So it's like anything that you have going on that you can identify anxious, anxiousness with is actually telling you how to heal it or how to get it into discipline or maintain it. Because there are people that actually need medication for it. We're not knocking any of um, the other components, but even, can I say people that I work with that are on medicine, they still, they experience the physical symptoms when they're not doing or working in the capacity that I'm giving you the information, the sheet. The capacity of information that you obtain about anything that's making you feel bad is where your awareness grows, your consciousness grows, and the thing can't hold you hostage. Now, you know, I'll be doing something on depression in another week or two. I will say 
some of the same things, but it won't be the same foundation physically, you know, because depression, it comes in differently. My thing would be, are you getting anything out of this? Because, you know, when I go into the Bible, it says be anxious for nothing, but everything to God in prayer. And, you know, I don't want to step on nobody's feet if they don't believe in the Bible where there is um, a religious practice or spirituality. There's um, even Muslims. Uh, the reason why they are praying and um, any Buddhist is because they want to desensitize anxiety, which is what our focus is today. Um, and some people do it for riches. Now, let's just go on here. They want to do it for riches. But at some point, that money and riches ain't coming. You're going to have to deal with your emotional issues, right? Can we get an amen up in this year, church? <laughs> no. <Amen. laughs> but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be anxious for anything if we take care of our inner spirit. And that's why medication won't work for some people. Um, it does get deep, but um, I've had, a, to me, I'm working with our people over time. And when I say oh, our people, I mean people that don't understand the dynamics of a family having diagnosis with different terminologies. Um, I get up every morning and I practice keeping depression at bay. Um, this is what my, my teacher says right now. I am a survivor of depression. And so the work that I do, I do was kind of catapulted out of myself and my family because I didn't know what was going on with me when I was a child. But anyway, uh, moving on, it says compulsive actions or rituals because anxiety makes you react without thinking beautiful declaration okay thank you yeah um i'm a survivor but um i'm not just wearing a t-shirt i work i work on it i really do um every day yeah so compulsive actions or rituals you could think of what do you do what are you doing that's compulsive and, and that's going to help you you can think of right now what behaviors trigger fear when I go out or if I'm around people or however you're triggered what makes you anxious and as you do you'll come up with something and you'll write it down because journaling can change your life writing change it can change your life because you can write I'm anxious right now but in the next minute I ain't and then anxiety will be gone because it's written you wrote it that's what you believe. Now, whatever your feelings are, is a belief system. Like people are um, struggling in areas because they believe what the world has showed them and also because they've taken on that belief system, all right? Um, identifying uh, uh, anxiety. Um, and I've gave you some um, ideas on it, but here is again, frequency and intensity. The normal nervousness becomes anxiety so this is a norm now and and now you don't know how to live without it you don't you don't know you you you, you come to a place and you say when did when did I get like this when did I get to a place where I can't stop worrying about things um normal nervousness becomes anxiety when the feeling are exceptionally intense and frequent so here we are we're in a prolonged um thought process of thinking about something that's not productive. It's actually wearing on our minds and our nervous system. Um, and it interferes with our daily life. You could, you know, some people have worried about the bill collector. They have worried about how they were going to make it. Uh, and it became a prolonged situation. Now, this is what I had to learn. And I will, you know, give you that message. And I teach it in other classes that I have. I learned how to become solution-based. It doesn't mean that my life is fantastical, but there's nothing that's coming that I will not sit down and think about how to counteract it. And a lot of our circumstances happened before we understood that we could have a problem with whatever we're going on with right now. So if we learn today to make choices predicated on the outcome of the future, you know, Jesus said that the man, he said, count up the cost. It's not just the money, count up the cost of what's gonna come when you make that decision. 
you know, a lot of a lot of people they make decisions in relationships based on what they think, but they didn't make a decision based on the character of the person they're with and themselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's an example. And so five to 10 years later, they're saying we have a problem. Of course, you should talk about it. The solution is to talk about it and work it out. It's not to leave and break up. Now, you know, I want to go into this here before anyone really um, bites my head off. They'll say, well, I was being abused. Okay, so let's look at that. And it will make you anxious because people become afraid of abusers. Yeah, And so in the beginning, there was there was signs that I could have looked at and said, I, I, this ain't going to work. See, I can't change no woman or no man. You, you see, they have to change themselves. That's why we're here today. And so if we make these decisions before, if we really look at them and we're honest with ourselves, we can change the dynamics of anxiety. In 2008, uh, the housing market, it failed. And it caused a lot of people to become homeless. The only people that profited from the homelessness is the government. The nervousness, anxiety, and depression of people losing their homes at that time when Obama went into office and they gave that money to the banks, the bailout was them. It was not the people. When you buy a house, here it is, it's again, Jesus said, count up the cost because you cannot depend on the system that we live in. Now, that's just an idea of how we get caught up in loops. Because when you go and sign documents, then people don't care about how you're going to pay it back. We're getting ready to have another market issue. But you don't have to be anxious for nothing. So someone will say, well, how do I change it? There's ways to change it because there's a solution. We ain't caught up in nothing. There is a solution today. You break the power of anxiety by changing your behavior. You don't depend on what other people are saying and doing. You start doing the homework on your own. Am I going too far here? No, ma'am. Sorry, I couldn't take myself off mute. <laughs> okay. And I um, I just want to know that I'm not going too far because I want to make sure that we understand because my teaching was straightforward. Did you ask me, God said? I didn't. I mean, I did a lot of things. So here we are and we are supported. We're supported because I will tell you what I can about my experiences to, to get you to a place of peace. Because see, out of all of the mess that I made in my life, I had to learn how to get peace. And it wasn't just going to school uh, for um, psychology or theology school. It was learning how to think better and make better choices. Um, any questions? If not, I'll go on. So physical symptoms, noticing recurrent physical symptoms like those listed above, particularly in the absence of a physical health problem. Um, impacting or impact on functioning. So if anxiety affects your work, relationships, or other aspects of life, it's a sign that help might be needed. Um, you can write down how it's affected your life if you have it. And most people, even if it's not all the time will experience um, feeling overexerted or not sleeping at night. And you'll ask the question, what's bothering me? Now you want to get a solution. What, what am I keeping up here so I can get it out? Regulating anxiety. Um, I, I'm an avid um, believer in meditation and listening to music without words. Um, if it's any music, uh, let it that it would be positive words because whatever we hear in our ear gate is going into our internal system. Meditation and relaxation make a habit of of taking ten to fifteen minutes of relaxation and, and really practice letting go of what you're thinking about so that you can get back to that center of your core, saying um, that I'm not thinking about that anymore. Trick your mind. 
because your mind has to be tricked in order for it to go back into a healthy state. It's like um, a circuit being tripped. Um, okay, we need some more circuits up in here, but we need some new ones. You know what I'm saying? In in the um, trip box. Um, physical exercise. Uh, regular activity effective in reducing symptoms of anxiety. I believe that, and this is me just giving information because I believe in supporting people is what I'm called to do. Um, reading will get your mind off of negative, just like positive music. So anything that you can get words into your mind um, that are different from what you've been listening to last year two years ago, whenever um, anxiety started coming, um, is really good. It reduces the symptoms. You want to learn how to manage it and not let it manage you. You know, I, I when I was going to um, a church, they used to say, it's the devil. And it is. It's, it's the devil, I say, in me. Because I didn't know how to manage that energy in me. All right. So healthy lifestyle choices, main, maintaining a balanced diet, keeping and getting enough sleep, avoiding excessive caffeine um, and alcohol can manage anxiety. Um, I work with uh, clients of all dynamics. Dynamics. If, if, if anyone uses, you know, like substance, caffeine, and I'm talking about drugs that are that are hard. And it's like not that I'm condemning anybody. I'm saying even here you can keep doing what you're doing and you can alleviate the anxiety from su substance abuse because whenever a person is detoxing, they will have anxiety um, and withdrawals for at least 30 days. And then they got to figure out how to live without the drug. It's just like cigarettes. Um, it's just like drinking. All of them are habitual. And that means that you got to change the habit. So we could go into if you if you eat a lot, you got to change the habit. Um, anxiety. If you love hard, you got to change the habit. All right. Cognitive behavior therapy, a type of psychotherapy that helps individuals change negative thought patterns, medication, and a support system. All right. So you guys have this. Any questions? any questions but i just wanted to say thank you um for sharing all the uh wealth of information that you did um it resonated deeply with me so i'm gonna sit with it all okay um i want to show you guys the the shadow work also and just kind of like hit on um the third or the fourth page, just going to be around. If you want the book, have, let me um tell me and I'll email it to you. Um, If you don't have it, yeah, the root chakra, red earth, I am. So you're defining I am and you're grounding your energy. As you focus on this chakra, it's within because that's the system that Paul was talking about. That's not really clear in the Bible. And it's located in the base of the body. You experience feelings and of security and support once you start working with it. Um, the root chakra is associated with grounding as our roots go deep into the earth and you see that happening. But you also feel grounded whenever you get around people that can talk about something that you deal with, that other people are afraid to talk about. I'm very transparent. Um, I was um, anxious about this class. I was nervous because even though I know a lot about um, different aspects of life, I still get nervous. And I'm glad because it, it, it lets me know that I'm still humble to serve. Um, anything planted properly will take root and sustain through emotional and physical situations of turbulence. You see, anything, that means that even if you feel like you planted um, your plants outside and because the, the wind comes and blows it, if it's planted properly, just for instance, it's going to stay there. This is us. We ain't going nowhere until God tells us to stand. What will not sustain in the root is improper planting or insecurity, trauma, 
lack and confusing thoughts. So all of these things have to leave us because it was not part of who we were supposed to be from the beginning of time. Imagining a firmness of a tree um, holding you. That's what you're going to look at. I look at Psalms 1. I read that and it gives me this idea. Psalms 1. Okay. Um, affirmations that go along with it is I am safe. I'm supported. The universe supports me. God supports me. I am whole. I am dependent or independent. And the reason why you're saying this is because anxiety is a key um, that it, it triggers you to make you think that, okay, I'm not safe. Something is wrong around me, but that's not it. It's actually triggering you, making you feel something that's not valid so that you can put the words in to say that, which is valid. I am safe. And it does, it takes time when um, a person has not been practicing this. That's why it's a, it's a practice on being positive about who you are, where you're going and what you're doing. All right. So anyone that don't that doesn't have this, I can email it to you. Just let me know. And um, I will uh, email you on the next class. I think in another week or two, I might do it um, after New Year's. Um, but I'll be in contact. OK, so I hope you all enjoyed and um, I will uh, talk to um, you all on the other end. All right. Blessings. See you later. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you, Yolanda. Bye. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.